Hey guys, this is Matt Core from controlpaint.com. And today we're gonna to conclude this series about customizing your digital workspace. And we're gonna do it with a custom space that I've created all about color grading. Now, as I mentioned, one part of the digital painting process for me is unlike the rest. This is where I make dramatic color overall changes like this before and after, where I'm not really painting so much as changing color and contrast but I'm doing it on specific areas of the image. Okay, so what would a workspace look like with that specific purpose in mind? What I've done is I've created one called Color Correction, and it's got a lot of stuff, really like a huge amount of panels, and normally I wouldn't put up with this much clutter, but this is actually very carefully laid out. So the core of this part of my workflow is to pick one element of the image and then to make a change to that element. So for instance, if I wanted to change the cup itself, I would select the cup area with one of my save selections, and then I'll apply some adjustment layer. So let's say I wanted to do curves. Here I could just change the contrast or perhaps one of the colors in the cup region. Okay, well maybe the next thing I want to do is to do something in sort of the background but only in the top. So I'll select just the background area and I will apply, uh, we'll do another curves. So I want to kind of blow it out and then maybe really enhance the green look. And then since I don't want that on the bottom, I use another sort of group mask. And here's where I will use the brush a little bit and I'll just kind of hide away some of that effect. But now the effect itself right here, the curves is something that I can work with sort of non-destructively. Maybe instead of green, I actually want to, you know, take away some of the green and make it a little bluer. Well, this is all very easy to do using these adjustment layers. So what I've done with this layout is to make everything visible at once that is related to this task. I have a lot of space for my layers panel, but I also use paths in the same way. Here I can control click on a path and that pulls up a selection. Same goes for channels. Here I can control click on any one of these channels and that helps as well. So some combination of maybe a path shape minus one of these shapes in here, I have a new selection really quickly. So this whole left half is kind of my, what part of the image do I want to change? And then since my cursor is over here, when I'm making my, my initial selection, well, the next thing I always do is to add an adjustment layer of some sort. So maybe this time we'll use levels. So I click the Levels button, and now here I have this Always Open Properties panel that is very big. And that's because really this part of the workflow pivots around using these adjustment layers. Something like Levels doesn't really take advantage of being so big, but something like Curves is actually quite nice to have large. So, you know, here I can get really fine tuning here with this big properties panel, one that I normally wouldn't want filling up so much space, but all I'm thinking about right now is color. And since I'm thinking about color, I'll have my histogram up. The histogram is very useful for getting diagnostic information. Now, right now I have it set to color mode. More often, I'll switch it to the expanded view, choose luminosity, and then go back to the compact view. So here I'm making changes overall changes to the image. So we'll do a really dramatic one like levels. And as I make changes, the histogram tells me the resulting levels. So I can change it and then look at the overall levels. So in a sense, this tells me how I'm doing. And this is my control surface. The two work together. And so even though the histogram and the properties bar are not always part of my layout. In this case, they're an essential component. So when I'm doing my color grading, that's not the end of the story. Also, I'll take everything I've done and we'll, we'll use my previous example here. Then I'm ready to paint again. So now I'm going to just switch back to my normal layout. And here is everything like you're used to seeing it. So I'm not encouraging you to copy this color correction layout. Not at all. This is just something that works for me. For you, you're going to have something totally different. But the point is, with a custom workspace and some really thoughtful layouts, you can make Photoshop a better program in a very real way. 
So I encourage you to take some time with this and build a few specific workspaces and you'll be really happy you did. Thanks for coming to the site, guys.